cannabis stocks getting absolutely destroyed. But hold up. Something might happen this week. And these are short sellers who are piling in. This isn't necessarily individuals who are holding cannabis stocks that are tapping out. We have the potential of something to happen this week. And should this happen, all those short sellers are going to be taking it pretty hard. Let me show you what I'm looking at, what you should be considering moving forward for the rest of this week and next week. And then beyond that, because this might be big. So we're at the very end of this Congress. Every Congress is elected for a two-year cycle. The new Congress, because of the November elections we just had, starts first of the year. Anything that's on the table today, if they can push it through, can go through. Anything that does not go through, scrapped. You have to start all over again. There is one piece of legislation that I'm actually probably more excited about as a potential than anything else, and that's the fact that uh, the Senate has passed unanimously to get rid of uh, daylight savings time, which would be fine by me, but let's stay focused if the House should pass that one. So Perlmutter out of Colorado, this is his last term. That's it. He's done. He's the one who's always been pushing the hardest, although we certainly have Representative Mace out of South Carolina, a Republican who will tell you straight to your face, cannabis saved my life. The only place cannabis is uh, volatile or an issue is here in Washington, D.C. Um, so Perlmutter is pushing forward and has stated he's going to try and put this together uh, safe plus one more time in the omnibus. Now, we go back to the chaos of last Monday. Actually, it was Tuesday that uh, SAFE was not included in the NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act. Since then, it has been an absolute slaughtering of cannabis stocks. Mace told us it was in there. If it stays in there, beyond her, of course, a crusty old white man from Kentucky pouted badly. This is why crusty old white men should not be involved in politics because they're completely out of touch with uh, their constituency, but instead are running a platform that forces everybody to do their, whatever the platform is versus what each individual state wants. And that's not government. That's buying policies. Um, if we get Perlmutter to put this in there, if it succeeds, and it goes in this omnibus bill. Now, omnibus, it's a budget bill. They're basically trying to spend stuff, spend money. The thing with budget considerations is you turn to every single Republican or Democrat, senator or House member, and you basically say, I want to put this in here. You're in the opposite party, different state. Say yes. Give me something you want to put in this thing as well. They call these budget things, these budget bills, Christmas trees. Because everybody gets to hang an ornament. That's something to keep in mind. Last I heard, 59 U.S. senators have signed off on the concept of safe in the omnibus. That was as of last week. The Senate absolutely talks with the House. Thursday, the House is done. Tuesday, not tomorrow, but next week, the Senate is done. So if the House is putting something together, something that uh, Senator from New York, what's his name? Um, Schumer said, this is a priority, which is why he was trying to put it in the NDAA. It's something he wants. So he's obviously going to be turning to the House saying, yeah, put it in there. We'll put that. We'll, we'll, we'll work to get this through. Schumer's not going to let anything get put into there where the Senate's just going to sit there and fold their arms and say, nope, Schumer needs 60 votes or, or any one of the 50 uh, Republican senators can filibuster that thing to death and it dies. So Schumer's making his phone calls based on everything that will be in this omnibus getting what he needs. Asking other senators, what do you need 
to get to yes. What do we need to put in there? So I'll tell the House of Representatives to get this done. When you look at it from that perspective, if it comes out of the House voted with Safe Plus in there, the only way it did get put in there is if Schumer's pretty dead certain he bought enough bribery from all the Republican senators to get it done. And right now, when you look at things, you know, the House is pretty much going to do what the House is going to do, but the most powerful group of people right now are 50 United States senators who want something, want to turn to their constituencies or the pharmaceutical companies or garbage companies, whoever, who keep throwing money their way. Now they have the ability to turn to the Democrats and say, all right, I'll say yes, but this is what I need. Those 50 United States senators are so powerful right now. When you look at it from that perspective, it's an interesting game of politics. So we go back to the House. Will Safe Plus be in the House bill, the omnibus bill? We don't know. Bloom, uh, they're saying they're trying. Now, what if it's not? Is that the death of cannabis federal legalization? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, it might be a vote to say, oh yeah, this is done. You don't need to put it in there. And hear me out on this one. Biden, prior to being the current president of the United States, he was the vice president. And before that, he was a United States senator for something like two decades. I don't know his full resume. He knows all these people. He's worked with them for, you know, in Washington, D.C. now for 35 years at least, if not 40. I don't know his resume, but he's been in there for a very long time. I remember he was the, uh, he was the key individual who, um, key senator who grilled um, one of the United States Supreme Court justices who's still on there today that Bush, I think it was Bush that nominated. Biden was key at that point. He was the, 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 the lead committee guy at that point in the late 80s. He's been around. He knows everybody that's kind of working there right now. So if Schumer doesn't think he can get it, he can call up Biden and say, what's going on with rescheduling? Biden can sit there and say, well, this is what we're doing. And so you don't need to do a thing at all. So if you're in the balance because you can't get this thing pushed forward, who cares? I'm going to do a signature in March, April, February. And that's done. So anything you do is useless. So don't get taken for a ride trying to get this thing through because we're going to reschedule it anyway. So if we see it go through the house, the only way it went through is because the Senate told them, yeah, we can get this done, put it in there. Keep in mind, this Thursday, the House is done. So if it, they'll probably vote on this on Thursday. This is probably going to be sent to the Senate on Thursday. The Senate has Friday, Monday, and Tuesday. Tuesday, they're done. That's it. The Congress is over. So the Senate can't change anything. They can't sit there and say, well, okay, would you pass this if we took out SAFE? The House is gone. If you took out safe, you have to send it back to the House to re-vote on the whole new thing. Both houses have to approve the exact same thing. So if it's in there, that should tell you, that's huge, that Schumer thinks he can get it done. If it's not in there, no big deal at all. I've maintained exactly the same sort of outlook. Hey, if the Congress can get something done, great. But really, the Congress doesn't need to get anything done. 
Biden needs to reschedule. Biden is in the process of rescheduling, making anything that the Congress does moot. We'll see how that plays out because the Congress could pass something and then January, Biden can turn around and do a signature. And who cared what happened with the Congress? So the first thing we're looking for, is this going to be included on Thursday's omnibus bill? They, the House will very likely vote for it on Thursday, then send it to the Senate. Senate then has Friday, Saturday, uh, Friday, Monday, and Tuesday to vote on it. My thinking, the only way that's in there is if Schumer has bought enough votes that it won't get killed in the Senate. Because the last thing Schumer wants is the last day of the Senate, some crusty old white guy from Kentucky who... God should have retired. I don't know how long ago. You don't want the Senate to deal Schumer another blow on the last day of Congress. So Schumer's going to make sure that this is a go. If we see it on Thursday, these short sellers, if we see Safe Plus uh, for Cannabis Federal Legalization on Thursday out of the House, the short sellers, oh, you're in for a ride. This will get voted on on a Tuesday, signed into law within 10 days thereafter, done. Cannabis will be federally illegal, but there will be a working mechanism for cannabis companies to gain access to banking and financial services, such as uplisting to NASDAQ. And that's a whole new ball game for profits, borrowing money, and a whole bunch of other things. Bottom lines on a lot of these cannabis stocks is going to shift dramatically and you're going to see all these stocks start sending pretty hard. So Thursday is what we're looking for. And if we pass beyond that, then the following Tuesday. If this is a fail on Thursday or next Tuesday, which if, if we see it on Thursday, we're going to see it next Tuesday. The vote. But if it doesn't show up on Thursday... Biden is going to do his signature. When? That could be 18 months from now. Who knows? I don't. None of us know. When it best serves Biden is what I'm thinking, which might not be till October 2024, which is 21 months from now, 22 months from now. We'll see. Let's take a look on Thursday because things might get interesting.